you must open the door to truly enter and arrive into a new moment into a new day you need to get there not just physically which we do because we like being on time for a lot of us but we need to get there mentally as well and our mind may be stuck in thoughts of yesterday our emotions may be stuck in regret or wonderings well it's time for us to arrive completely mentally physically and emotionally not just into a new day but into new conversations into new meetings into new moments of our life completely so that we enjoy and can savor every single moment of life thank you for joining me mind your health staying well with rj keisha welcome mind your health staying well with rj keisha and today we have someone who's been studying for the longest times and she's been constantly adding wellness spokes into her life. I'm feeling amazing. Yes, there's that joyful feeling inside of me as I welcome Ifat Yasmin into our Mind Your Health space. She's a craniosacral biodynamic practitioner. But today, we're going to ask her about a special tool that she uses, a wellness tool to arrive. It's actually a joy uh, to just realize that uh, this is a moment perhaps when you really start to experience um, uh, those little moments in life that will allow you to start gathering self. And that's uh, in a way that allows you to then create the next moment that will be more resourceful. And those are just uh, brackets of resources that are around us. And how can we kind of pull that in in that moment that allows us to then create the next moment? Is it even possible to bring this mindfulness or um, what I call Kisha is heartfulness? I used to bring this concepts of um, understanding that the centering always happens in the heart. And um, I kind of moved away from understanding about mind because mind somehow kind of deviates my, at least in my mind, it kind of deviates into a space that is a lot abstract. And I would like to bring that closer to my body, which is where I can find this stillness in myself. And I feel the centering happens in the heart for me. If I go back to the science of embryology, uh, when the fetus is the embryo, when it's very little, when it's forming those creative forces, when, it, when they are being formed, uh, the heart is the first thing as a center pole that is recognized when you do the scan. And it's actually around the heart is how the spine and the brain actually develops. And then uh, the brain and the spinal cord then starts to kind of take a shape where it uncurls itself and then the heart is in the center. In my practice of craniosacral biodynamics, these creative forces are what is available for us for healing throughout our life. So the first few weeks of creative forces that are seen during embryonic development is available for us throughout our life. Our mind and our spirit is actually having wings all the time, Keisha. That's the spirit of it. That's the beauty of it as well, that you need to have that vastness to be able to fly and to have the wings to, without any limit to it, which is why we say everything is possible on this earth. At the same time, it needs to have its boundaries. You see? Because that's when it can ta start to take form. If our mind is constantly on those wings, all the time in that vastness of the sky, how can we then become more aware of this moment where there is health? The simplest way to do that, one is to recognize where is my body. So if I can bring my mind to the body, then I am here. Else I am in that vastness, a point in vastness somewhere that is limitless. Universe is limitless and my mind can be as as expansive as that. So um, to bring that, um, you know, the, the point in vastness to then manifestation can only happen when we start to think about the doability of it. So how can I make it happen, right? It's otherwise, it's extremely overwhelming because there are no boundaries. There are no boundaries. I need to bring that boundaries that then it becomes alive for me in front of me. So for me, the closest thing that works is to recognize where is my body. 
So you can leave your eyes open, you can leave your eyes closed, whatever feels much comfortable. Just recognize um, to bring the awareness to where are your hands and legs. Do I feel my hands that are close to my body? Where are they placed? Are they on my lap? Are the palms open? And where are my legs? Are they folded in a cross or are you sitting on a chair? Just recognizing this little moment to know where my body is and how it's arranged without necessarily changing it starts to bring in a certain kind of awareness that moves from the body to the breath. Now bring the awareness from inside to outside and you can open up your eyes and sense where are we. So just that connection, Kisha, and the way I'm looking at you now and how I feel about myself um, feels different than the moment just a few seconds ago, you know. Exactly. So it really exactly. doesn't take that long if you realize it. It's, it didn't take us more than a few seconds, actually. So actually what really happens is when you pull yourself into the moment, you suddenly have this present gift that you've given yourself because you're just looking at maybe an hour down the line, you've got a call with somebody. So you're, you're waiting to kind of kill time and which is so, it, it's actually taking away power from your life because if you're killing time till you just get to that phone call, what about all these other amazing, precious moments that are just getting lost in the middle? Yes. So what you're giving yes. us is more moments of awareness. And every time you're doing that, the entire body is centering itself around the heart. Exactly. And besides being aware of your body as, as one of the arriving techniques, are there any other techniques or tools that we can use on a day-to-day -day basis? Oh, yes, there are vastly so many of them. When you go to the kitchen, you definitely will get a spoon like this. Uh, the spoon that has a little, um, yeah, there you go. That, that's kind of spoon. So you have this silvery uh, kind of side, which is like really smooth and nice. And one side is a concave, right? So the convex and the concave uh, base. So you, this is a very simple tool that you can use at home. And you can do this at different points in your body, but you can also help your children, um, you know, come into their bodies for example especially the ones who have you know gone flat on the floor and they are screaming and shouting so they are no more in their bodies that's the reason why it's so it's called a tantrum you know i i stay away from using those terms i just feel like they are overwhelmed that's exactly what's happening with them so their minds are not with their bodies so you can even help them do this even adults Absolutely. are overwhelmed adults. Yes, adults, um, even elderly people, uh, Kisha. So you can help them as well because especially the most vulnerable people who can be easily overwhelmed in their nervous system is either the elderly people or the younger ones. And of course, um, always people like us <laughs> at all ages, we are constantly overwhelmed. So yeah, so it's easy to grab a spoon. So how, what you do with that is you simply take a spoon and take the, um, you know, the, the roundish part of it and you run it at the back of your palm or at the back of your spine or even at the sole of your feet. You know, just the same way, the sole of the feet as well. So it's amazing how your body actually then starts to come into itself. And then you will notice that there is something that's shifting and changing because quickly it brings in that aspect of, connection of the mind body and emotions in control it's an amazing tool uh, kisha what we are doing is actually grounding and discharging the extra energy that has been built up because of the overwhelming emotions that are coming in us and that needs an earthing just like too much electricity needs to have the earthing and that's exactly what we need to do with our bodies as well because we are constantly having electrical signals passing through our bodies and when we are emotional we are like buzzing like the buzz is really strong yeah a lot of people would like to go ahead and maybe walk on grass or yes. also another way to to ground yourself but this at home maybe just 
when you're getting ready to sleep or when you're really feeling emotional and overwhelmed, a great tool to add to your life. So you, you are making sure that we have all our tools when we are on the go and, and allowing us to feel centered and, and calm our nerves even when we are on the go. But I know that you have something else in your, in your bag of offerings today. Yes. So if you don't have a spoon and you have forgotten it, we just need to have our hands. And we do this in India actually because um, in a different context, uh, which I may disagree on Kisha, is a little punishment that we used to get at school. Uh, from our teachers or even at home sometimes that when you do a mistake, they ask you to actually uh, just hold your earlobes on yeah. and across your hands. And the relevance and the significance of this is, again, the prefrontal cortex, cortex actually gets stimulated and brings our body into more awareness the moment you touch your earlobes. And if you cross your hands, what happens is, uh, you're bringing the coordination between the right and left brain in regulation. It's an amazing tool, uh, Kisha. It's used in, uh, in a way for, um, you know, as an occupational uh, uh, practice, even for children who have special needs, like, for example, who are on autism spectrum or children who are having um, ADHD attention deficit or children who have been labeled by I know uh, different kinds of issues that might be at their early developmental age. Uh, these are some of the tools that they bring in to actually bring that left and right brain, you know, connection. And so when you, when you cross your hands over and you're, you're holding your earlobes, do you have to tug at them a little? Yeah, it's sort of a little bit tugging. And sometimes it helps you to get the blood to circulate right up to your brain. And you can do that by little sit-ups, you know, you bend and sit down and get up and sit down and get up. Mm -hmm. And the only context that it needs to change is from punishment, punishment to empowerment. You're empowering them to know that this is letting you push that um, brain cells to function better and you're more aware of what's happening in this moment and increases your learning capabilities. Lovely. If Yasmin, you always bring so much of soul to the table every single time I've had the opportunity to learn from you or meet you. Today, you've empowered us with tools that will allow us to arrive into every single moment of our life. Thank you very much for joining me today on Mind Your Help, Staying Well with our Jay Keisha. Arriving into a closure as well is an arrival. And we right now are mindful that this episode of Mind Your Health, Staying Well with RJ Keisha has come to an end, but I'm hoping you'll take all these techniques into your everyday life, practice them, share them, which you'll also do with this episode, right? Go ahead, like, subscribe, share, comment, and let people know about Mind Your Health, Staying Well, with RJ Keisha.